All right, here are the examples from lesson 4.2. This is trigonometric functions defined on the unit circle, and this is example one. Suppose that a real number t corresponds to the point p, square root of 5 over 5, positive 2 square root of 5 over 5 on the unit circle. Evaluate the six trigonometric functions of t. Okay, the sine of t is going to be defined as the y coordinate divided by the radius. But on the unit circle, the radius is 1, so in essence, the sine is just going to be the y coordinate. And in this case, that's just going to be 2 times the square root of 5 over 5. The cosine of t is defined to be x divided by r, but again, the radius on the unit circle is 1, so this is just going to be x, and that is, in this case, square root of 5 over 5. The tangent is defined to be the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. Now, in this case, we're looking at 2 square roots of 5 over 5 over the square root of 5 over 5. And when we divide fractions, remember we take the bottom one, invert it, and multiply. So this turns into 2 square roots of 5 over 5 times 5 over the square root of 5. And it looks like our 5s are going to cancel, and our square roots of 5 are going to cancel, and we're just going to be left with 2. The cotangent of t is going to be defined as the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate. And in this case, we're looking at the square root of 5 over 5 divided by 2 square roots of 5 over 5. This is going to turn into the square root of 5 over 5 times 5 over 2 square roots of 5. And it looks like our 5s are going to cancel. Our square roots of 5 are going to cancel. We've got 1 left over on the top, 2 left over on the bottom. This is going to be 1 half. The cosecant of t is defined to be r over y. Well, remember, on the unit circle, r is equal to 1. And then the y-coordinate is 2 square roots of 5 over 5. This is going to turn into 1 times 5 over 2 square roots of 5. Well, 1 times anything, that's just going to give me 5 times 2 square roots of 5. And we need to rationalize the denominator. We don't want to have a radical down here, so we're going to have to multiply this by the radical 5 over radical 5. In the numerator, that's going to give me 5 square roots of 5. Oops, that's a 5, not a 2. And in the denominator, we're going to have 2 times the square root of 25. Well, I know the square root of 25 is 5. So I actually have 5 square roots of 5 over 2 times 5, and it looks like my 5s are going to cancel here. Don't cancel that one out because it's under the radical sign. And the cosecant looks like it's going to be the square root of 5 divided by 2. The secant of t is defined to be r divided by x. That means we have 1 divided by the square root of 5 over 5. This is going to turn into 1 times 5 over the square root of 5. That's just going to give me 5 over the square root of 5. But once again, we don't want to have a radical in the denominator. So we're going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by 5, I'm sorry, by the square root of 5. This is going to give me 5 square roots of 5 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm going to have the square root of 25. But I know the square root of 25 is 5. So this fraction becomes 5 times the square root of 5 over 5. 
and then these two fives will cancel out. Again, this one's underneath the radical, so don't touch it. And then your answer is going to be the square root of 5 for the secant of t. Example 2. Evaluate the six trigonometric functions of the real number t, part a, when t is equal to 5 pi over 6, and part b, when t is equal to negative 3 pi over 4. All right, if we look on the unit circle, the coordinates at 5 pi over 6 are negative square root of 3 over 2 and positive 1 half. So if we define each of our trig functions, the sine of t is going to be 1 half. The cosine of t is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. The tangent of t is going to be 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, that's going to be 1 half times 2 over the negative square root of 3. My 2's are going to cancel. So we have 1 over the square root of 3, and it is negative. We can't have a radical in the denominator, so we're going to multiply by the square root of 3 over square root of 3. This is going to give me the negative square root of 3 over the square root of 9. I know the square root of 9 is just 3, so the tangent is negative square root of 3 over 3. Don't cancel those because this one's underneath the radical and the other one's not. All right, the cosecant of t is going to be, let's see, so this was going to be r divided by y. Now remember r is just 1 because we're on the unit circle. And so y was 1 half. So we have 1 divided by a half, which is the same thing as 1 times 2 over 1, which will just give me 2. The secant of t this is going to be r divided by x. That means we're going to have 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2. So this is going to turn into 1 times negative 2 over the square root of 3. That's just going to give me negative 2 over the square root of 3. But we can't have a radical in the denominator. So we rationalize by multiplying by square root of 3 over square root of 3. That gives me negative 2 square roots of 3 over the square root of 9, but I know the square root of 9, it's 3. So we got negative 2 square roots of 3 over 3. And finally, the cotangent is defined to be x over y. That means this time we're going to have negative square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Well, this is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, and the 2's are going to cancel. This is going to give me negative square root of 3. Okay, now I'm going to need to erase all this to work with part B and make room for it. All right, and now on to part B. In part B, we are going to find all of the trigonometric functions for t is equal to negative 3 pi over 4. Now, if you look on the unit circle at negative 3 pi over 4, the coordinates are negative square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. All right, so our sine of t is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. Our cosine for t is also going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. The tangent for t is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2 over negative square root of 2 over 2. This is going to turn into negative square root of 2 over 2 times negative 2 over the square root of 2. The square root of 2's are going to cancel, the 2's are going to cancel, the negatives are going to cancel, and so all that's going to be left is 1. The cotangent 
is going to be the flip of that, negative square root of 2 over 2 over negative square root of 2 over 2. And once again, we're going to simplify it, and we're going to find out this is equal to 1. The cosecant, all right, we have, let's see, r divided by y. So this is going to be 1 over negative square root of 2 over 2, which is 1 times. 2 over the negative square root of 2, which is going to give me 2 over the negative square root of 2, or, uh, 2 over the negative square root of 2. We do not want to have a radical in the denominator, so we need to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. This is going to give me 2 square root of 2 over negative square root of 4. Well, I know the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 2 squared to 2 over negative 2, and they are going to cancel. Remember, leave this one alone, so the cosecant looks like it's going to be negative square root of 2. And the secant is going to work out exactly the same way because our x-coordinate and our y-coordinate are equal to each other. So this is also going to be the negative square root of 2. Example 3. Evaluate the six trigonometric functions of the real number t, part a, t is equal to negative 2 pi, part b, t is equal to 3 pi over 2. All right, if we check on the unit circle, the coordinates at 2 pi are 1 and 0. And if we check on the unit circle, the coordinates at 3 pi over 2 are 0 and negative 1. Okay, so let's start with a. The sine of t is going to be 0. The cosine of t is going to be 1. The tangent of t is going to be 0 divided by 1, which is going to give me 0. The cotangent of t is going to be 1 divided by 0. Well, that's not a real number, so this one is undefined. The cosecant of t, remember this is r divided by y, and r is equal to 1, so we got 1 divided by 0, and well, that's undefined as well. And then to do the secant, this is going to be r divided by x, so that's going to be 1 divided by 1, which is going to give us 1. All right, now for part B. The sine of t is going to be negative 1. The cosine for t is going to be 0. The tangent of t is going to be 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. We can't have 0 in the denominator. The cotangent of t is going to be 0 divided by 1. That's 0. The cosecant of t, this is going to be 1 divided by negative 1, which is going to give us negative 1. And then the secant of t, this is going to be 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. Example 4. Given that the sine of t is positive 5 over 8 and the cosine of t is the positive square root of 39 over 8, use the reciprocal and quotient identities to find the values of the other trigonometric functions of t. All right, the cosecant of t. The reciprocal identity is that this is equal to 1 divided by the sine of t which means in this case we have 1 divided by 5 over 8. Well, this turns into 1 times 8 over 5, and that's going to give me 8 over 5 as my cosecant. The secant of t, its reciprocal definition is 1 over the cosine of t, which in this case will be 1 over the square root of 39 over 8, 
this turns into 1 times 8 over the square root of 39. This is going to give us 8 over the square root of 39, but we can't have a radical in the denominator, so let's rationalize. We'll multiply by square root of 39 over the square root of 39. This gives us 8 times the square root of 39 over the square root of 1,521, but we know the square root of that, it is 39. So the secant is going to be 8 times the square root of 39 over 39. All right, now the tangent. The tangent of t, we will use the quotient identity, which says this is the sine of t divided by the cosine of t. The sine is 5 over 8. The cosine is the square root of 39 over 8. This turns into 5 over 8 times 8 over the square root of 39. The 8's are going to cancel. We're left with 5 over the square root of 39. And then let's rationalize the denominator. So the square root of 39 over the square root of 39. This will give me 5 times the square root of 39 over the square root of 1,521. And I know the square root of that is 39. So it looks like the tangent is 5 times the square root of 39 over 39. Now the cotangent, we have a choice. We can either use the reciprocal identity, which would be 1 over the tangent, or we can use the quotient identity, which is the cosine over the sine. And I think I'm going to do that one because it's going to save me a little bit of work to do it this way. If I did the reciprocal identity, I would end up having to rationalize the denominator. All right, our cosine, we have square root of 39 over 8. The sine, 5 over 8. This is going to turn into the square root of 39 over 8 times 8 over 5. The 8s will cancel and we are left with the square root of 39 over 5 as our cotangent. Example 5. Given that the cosecant of t is equal to positive 5 over 4 for pi over t less than t less than pi, use an appropriate identity to find the value of the cotangent of t. Okay, now this piece right here, what this does is it tells us the quadrant that our angle is located in. So pi over 2 and pi, if we look, pi over 2 is located up here, pi is over here, that means our angle is located in quadrant 2. And the cosecant is positive over in quadrant 2. But the cotangent is negative in quadrant 2. And so our final answer down here, we're going to have to have a negative cotangent there. All right, so I'm just going to put a note up here, the cotangent negative in quadrant 2. All right, let's use the Pythagorean identity. We're going to use the fact that 1 plus the cotangent squared is equal to the cosecant squared. All right, so 1 plus the cotangent squared of t, and we know what the cosecant is. It's 5 over 4, so we're just going to need to square that. We have 1 plus the cotangent squared of t. This will be equal to 25 over 16. Now, if we subtract 1, we're going to have the cotangent squared of t equal to 9 over 16. Don't forget to get a common denominator between these two. And then we want to square root both sides. And then, of course, the radical and the square will cancel. 
and we're left with the cotangent of t on the left and on the right the square root of 9 is 3 the square root of 16 is 4 and don't forget the cotangent should be negative so we wanted to have the negative square root example 6 for a given real number t express the tangent of t in terms of the secant of t all right let's use our Pythagorean relationship there that we know that the tangent squared of t plus 1 is equal to the secant squared of t and essentially what they're asking me to do is take this problem and solve it for the secant of t sorry they're asking me to solve it for the tangent not for the secant all right so we're trying to get tangent by itself let's subtract one to the other side that gives me the tan squared of t is equal to the secant squared of t minus 1. And then we can square root both sides so that we can get the tangent of t instead of having the tangent squared. Don't forget to put the plus minus over here on this side. We got the square root secant squared of t minus 1. And of course the radical and the square are going to cancel and we're left with the tangent of t over here we can't simplify this one don't square root that secant squared because that minus one messes everything up just leave it as the positive and negative square root of the secant squared of t minus one example seven given that the sine of pi over a is equal to the square root of two minus the square root of two over two determine the value of the sine of negative 15 pi over 8. Okay, we're going to use the property of periodicity here. And what I'm actually going to be looking for is I'm trying to figure out if pi over 8 is actually coterminal with negative 15 pi over 8. Because if it is, then I'm already going to know what the sine is because I knew what the sine of pi over 8 was. In fact, all of the trig functions would be the same there. So I'm going to take pi over 8 and I'm going to subtract 2 pi because we're going down. We're going to see if we can get to the negative angles there. All right. Getting common denominators here. Let's see. 2 pi is actually 16 pi divided by 8. And pi minus 16 pi is going to give me negative 15 pi divided by 8. So these angles are, in fact, coterminal. And that means that the sine is the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 over 2. All right, example eight, we're going to use the properties of trigonometric functions to simplify. Specifically, we're looking at odd and even. Now, the secant and the cosine are both even functions. And what that tells me is when I take the secant of a negative angle, it's the same thing I'm going to get if I take the secant of a positive angle here. So if I were to take the secant of t and subtract 2 secant t, that's just going to give me negative or negative 1 secant t. All right, down here in B, when I take the sine of a negative angle, this is an odd function, so we can think of it as um, factoring out this negative, and we're going to actually bring it out here. That's going to turn that into a positive, and that's going to make this angle in here a positive as well. Over here, this 2t plus 2 pi is coterminal, and it is coterminal with the sine of 2t. And so we're just going to add this sine of 2t right here. And then I just add 1 sine of 2t plus 1 sine of 2t gives me two of those sine of 2t's. All right, example nine, we're supposed to use a calculator to approximate the function values and round those to four decimal places. The first one is the tangent of 1.4. The second one is the cotangent of pi over eight. Now, this one is in radians. Actually, they both are. And normally, the pi is kind of a giveaway that you're in radians, but it doesn't always have to be that way because sometimes they'll throw a question in on the test and then put a degree symbol out here. And say, oh, no, we're in degrees. We're not really in radians, but just pay attention. Without the degree symbol, it means your angle is in radians. And that's exactly why this one's in radians. There's no degree sign up here. 
Okay, so when you do these in your calculator, make sure your mode is set on RAD for radians, not DEG for degrees. Okay, and all you need to do is press your tangent key and then 1.4 and enter. And if you have put it in correctly, you should get 5.7970. For part A. Now, it's actually a longer decimal than this, but rounded to four decimal places, that's what you get. And then for B, to get to the cotangent, this one's going to be a little bit trickier because what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do this as 1 divided by the tangent of pi over 8. And again, be sure you're in radians, and if you've written it incorrectly, you should get 2. Four one four two.